After officers of the regular German army attempted to assassinate him, Hitler had increasingly trusted the Waffen-SS. He entrusted them with carrying out his decisive counterattack in the Ardennes. He gave responsibility for the key right flank of the assault to the best troops under the command of Josef Dietrich, a loyal follower from the early days. The 6th Panzer Army under the command of Dietrich consisted the 1st and 2nd SS Panzer Corps with 4 Panzer Divisions. The 1st Panzer Corps consisted of the 12th Panzer Division Hitler Jugend and the 1st Panzer Division Leibstandarte. Their main task was to quickly break through the American lines and then make a lightning advance to the Meuse River. The plans of the German command were to reach these positions in two or three days and to secure the bridgeheads of the river to pave the way for the 2nd SS Panzer Corps which would have continued the march toward Antwerp. In order to speed up the march and avoid possible logistical confusions, the two armor divisions of the 1st Panzer Corps were assigned separate directions of travel, so-called roll bands. In 3 in the north, A, B and C were to be followed by the 12th Panzer Division Hitler Jugend, while the 1st Panzer Division Leibstandarte were to follow the southern routes, D, and E. The 1st Panzer Division organized powerful tactical groupings to exploit these access routes and quickly defeat the American forces. General Wilhelm Monke organized Kampfgruppe Hansen under the leadership of Max Hansen with the Panzergrenadier Regiment 1 and Kampfgruppe Knittel under Gustav Knittel with the Reconnaissance Battalion of Division along Rollbahn E. Rollbahn D was dedicated to Kampfgruppe Zandig with the Panzergrenadier of the Panzergrenadier Regiment 2 under Rudolf Zandig and Kampfgruppe Peiper under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Joachim Peiper. The forces assigned to Peiper were particularly strong and consisted about 5,000 soldiers with over 110 tanks. 35 Panthers, 35 Panzer IV tanks and 45 Tiger II tanks. Piper organized the Kramgruppe as follows. Two companies of Panzer IV tanks were at the front, which were more suitable for an agile maneuver in depth, followed by the Panthers and the Panzergrenadiers on half-tracks and leaving the Tiger II tanks in the rear. The American defenses in the sector affected by the planned attack of the 1st Panzer Division were particularly weak. They consisted practically only the 14th Cavalry Group, a group of mechanized cavalry with two squadrons equipped with only lightly armored vehicles and a company of tank destroyers. In fact, the first day of the Ardennes Offensive, the 16th of December, initially passed disappointingly for the impatient Piper. His powerful armored column found itself involved in a huge bottleneck of traffic of other German units and had to wait hours for a slow progress of the German infantry before being able to advance. But from the beginning, US troops found themselves in difficulty and the officers quickly lost control of the situation ordering a series of confused retreats. During the night, Piper's tanks continued forward, arriving without opposition on December the 17th at Buchholz, which was occupied without any difficulty. Without stopping, Piper continued the advance and at 6 o'clock his vehicles arrived in Honsfeld, where they overwhelmed an American column completely unaware of the proximity of the enemy. The American troops offered no resistance, Piper captured several hundred prisoners and considerable quantities of materials. Already in Honsfeld, 
Kampfgruppe Piper also gave a first demonstration of his brutal methods and at least seven American prisoners were shot inside the village. The American cavalry unit was also attacked by Kampfgruppe Hansen, which was advancing south of Piper, where Task Force Myers was surprised and destroyed on the morning of the 18th of December by the Panzer Grenadiers. In fact, while these violent fights were taking place, further south Piper had resumed his advance. Informed of the poor state of the road west of Honsfeld and eager to seize the large American fuel depot located in Mühlingen, Piper decided to abandon the planned route and go up northwest along Rollbahn C, originally assigned to the 12th Panzer Grenadier Division Hitler Jugend, a formation which in reality was still far behind. At 8 o'clock, the Kampfgruppe occupied Bullingen without much difficulty, and Piper was able to refuel his vehicles. Between noon and 1 pm, the German spearhead approached a crossroad two miles southeast of Malmedy. An American convoy of about 30 vehicles was negotiating the crossroads and it was turning right. The spearhead of Piper's group spotted the American convoy and opened fire, immobilizing the first and last vehicles of the column and forcing it to a halt. Armed with only rifles and other small arms, the Americans surrendered to the German tank force. The German troops left behind assembled the American prisoners in a field along with other prisoners captured earlier the day. Many of the survivors testified that about 120 troops were standing in the field when, for unknown reasons, the SS troops suddenly opened fire with machine guns on the prisoners. The armored column led by Piper continued west. At this moment, the armored forces led by Piper seemed to endanger the headquarters of the US 1st Army in Spa and came dangerously close to the large fuel depot at Stavlo. After a few days, however, Piper's Kampfgruppe was seriously hampered by the American forces. Also not supported by the other task forces of his division, Piper found himself increasingly isolated ahead, while the Americans converged powerful reserves to counter the advance and encircle him. After being cut off and surrendered, the Kampfgruppe still fought for days waiting for help from the outside. Finally, on the 23rd of December, Piper, who was completely out of fuel and supplies, had to start the retreat on foot after abandoning the heavy vehicles. On the 26th of December, the remains of the Kampfgruppe, reduced to 800 men without motorized vehicles, re-entered the German lines. The advance of this Kampfgruppe was the most dangerous of the first day of the offensive.